Howdy folks, Frankie D back here again on YouTube. Say I like to have another build I like to show you I've done in years past. I dug those out down below. I was ramsing down the base and looking around for what I could find, you know, I got so much down there. Uh, I found this one laying inside my box. I had boxed up for all these years. I built this in 1969. And I was still in the Navy when I, when I bought that. This time I didn't build a board ship like I've done the other one. Did. I, I more or less, I, I built this at home. I came home from leave. Um, this was probably one of the fourth 132nd scale kit produced by Ravel at that time. And sure, follow like that came, the bow fighter came out after that. I got that one too down below. I can dig around and see if I can find that. I do. I'll post it here to share it to you guys. Uh, on this particular aircraft right here, it's a typical Measurement 110. That's the name of the today's topic on YouTube. Uh, this is a 132nd scale. And it has radar antennae on the nose. And had the swastikas on the uh, on the vertical stabilizers. At those days, they they had swastikas on their kits. Nowadays, they don't. I guess they're banded. And uh, a lot of model builders feel that you know that I'm with Alex 100 percent. You know, and we don't have nothing to say anything about. Fascism, all it is is nothing but history of the airplane. I mean, a German airplane does not look right without having the swastika on there. So, that completes and fills the bill of German aircraft with the swastika and signi they have on the rudder sections of the plane. Um, here it is, folks. I'd like to, to produce my 132nd scale. Measurement 110. You gotta look closer so you can see it. This antennae up here is very, they're very fragile. They're just a breeze of breaking. It's a wonder that never got busted. All those years I had this airplane. I've had this airplane since 1969, fellas. And it's one of my vast collections I've had since I was a, a boy. And a very young man like yourselves out there. You little walk around, it's all airbrushed. As Schwartz green, Dunker green, with sky blue for the under surfaces, as you can see. There you go, Alex. I know you like Swatsuka, sir. So do I. They look good in German airplanes. They fill the bill. There's top section again, fellas. The cockpit is uh, pretty well detailed. I think this hatch opens up. It does. I'll be darned. I forgot all about that. I painted the whole pile up there. Kit comes with two 132nd scale figures. And also, I don't know why they didn't do it in Mosquito Bomber. Mosquito only gives you one Mercedes Rolls Royce uh, motor. Now this one here, they gave me two of them. As I move this panel off here, you can see the detail of the engine. They give you two engines this kit, fellas. Two engines. Yep. That's your measurement 110. 
It's a good kit. I really enjoyed building it. I can never. It was cheap. I think I paid a dollar ninety-eight for it. I haven't seen this model on the shelves in years. And uh, I would build another if I seen another one out there. So perhaps maybe someday we'll build Germany and they bring one out again. Um, so far, this kit has never been reissued, to my knowledge of Italy. I haven't seen any there out there in Cyber Space at all. You run across them on eBay, but uh, as, uh, as being re reissued, it's uh, less doubtful. Kit wasn't too difficult to build, straightforward. Uh, it's old, it's all airbrushed. And I feathered in the, uh, the light, light sky blue they use with the, with the Duncan Green. I enjoy the building. It's good. It's a good build. And uh, as I said before, perhaps if I run across another one, I'll build another. And uh, makes a good companion with uh, with your Folk Wolf FW190 Adoras. Your Heinkels. It's a very, a very good kit. And um, the builder should have no problem building it. There's no aftermarket parts at all. Decals came in the kit. They're getting kind of old a little bit. I noticed a couple of my squadron code letters are, have worn off. Maybe someday I may want to restore this and go ahead and get a new decal set for it, but I don't know. I got too much fish to fry, too much on my plate to finish up before I get started on that. But so I, I figured I'd bring it out of the mothballs, bring it up top side so you guys be able to see this. This is a 1969 kit. And it's, I had it forever. And, uh,. These were pretty good fighters back in World War II. Look, Buffalo, they were they were pretty good. These were, were almost like a lightning bomber. They're really fast. They had plenty of good maneuverability. And they pack a good punch. I imagine this version is some kind of a radar, or like a Pathfinder or something, or a radar a, a, a version. I don't I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming it's all radar. And. Uh, very interesting though. The Germans are pretty keen on a lot of stuff like that, and they had a lot of good credibility of their of their aircraft that they manufactured during the war. Anyway, folks, uh, grandfather clock on the corners got his hands pointing at me, telling me it's time to get sign off here. So I got a little time to say my goodbye. So I'll pass it over. I'll probably have another one night for you. Anyway, uh, I'd like to thank everybody out there for all your comments I'm getting from you fine fellows out there. And uh, I'll be glad to do all I can to answer your comments. I appreciate you guys very much for what you're doing. Alex, you the man. Baghead, you the man. Lenny, all you guys. All you guys are great out there. And uh, so, good old Willing Creeks Don't Rise. I'll have another uh, video for tomorrow on my albatross. But for now, please subscribe. And uh, thank you very much, fellas, for everything. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And may God bless. See you next time.